Hi everyone, this is Bobby from bn-games.com and welcome to the Taito 2 Mini Review. Before we get started, I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, I don't usually wear sunglasses during the review, but I'm going to be dating the video. I had eye surgery this weekend, which has delayed this video. This Most of what you're going to see I've already done in the past week or two. So this was mostly completed and unfortunately I'm shooting this after the, the uh, surgery. So I apologize for this, this is not a normal thing. Second thing, if you're watching this review, this is going to be a long review. Yeah, you probably saw the time code anyway. But uh, chapters will be in the description below um, to skip to parts that you might find more interesting. So uh, let's uh, get into it. This mini cabinet was released this year in March. Um, I've had it for a couple weeks now and I got it from Amazon Japan because I pre-ordered it when it first came out on news sites. Um, I didn't know there was going to be a Western release. You can get a Western release version of the cabinet, but I do not believe it comes as a full set with everything you're going to see in this video, but I can't say for sure. What I can tell you is that this cabinet and the entire package you're going to see is everything that's been released so far for this particular cabinet. There will be more games as far as I know and little SD cards. You'll see more of that because I've gotten one of those. But uh, I paid somewhere around $600 US for the entire package you're about to see. This is a niche product for people who really like the games that, are, that come with this cab, who have an affinity for the cab itself, you know, obviously, and uh, or anyone who is an arcade aficionado of, of some sort. So this is not going to be for everybody, but we're still going to talk about it. Now, as you can see in the background, this is a real Taito Egret 2. This is my Egret 2 cabinet. It is a real candy cab from Japan. Um, I purchased this from somebody in Santa Monica about 10 years ago, and I've had it since that time. If you've watched really any videos on the channel in the last three or four years, this is in the background all the time. Uh, I play it. I mean, it's not here just for show, but it's a nice backdrop for a lot of my videos. And uh, if, you, if you've been subscribed, you've probably seen this a lot. If you're new to the channel or new to candy cabinets, uh, the Egret 2 is known as a candy cabinet. It is a Japanese sit-down arcade machine, a very popular machine from Japan. This particular machine is popular because it comes with a rotating mechanism, which I'll show now, which allows you to switch the monitor from horizontal to tate or vertical mode for shooters. It's on a swivel mechanism because most candy cabinet cabs or even other arcade machines, you literally have to unbolt the monitor, pull it up and twist it, put it back in place and bolt it back into place. I'm not keeping it in tate mode because uh, I don't have any games that run in this mode. Just wanted to show you rot it rotating by myself. And monitors weigh 100 pounds, 150 pounds, depending on the size. It is very dangerous, uh, very heavy, and, and that's something a lot of people want to do. And if um, in Japan, with these particular types of machines, if they put in a game that required the monitor to be put in vertical mode for a shooter, for example, they would have to open up the cab, which I'm going to show, unbolt it, pull the, the monitor out, twist it, Put it back in place and bolt it in and who knows how often they'd have to do this um again like i said it's a dangerous process it's heavy and it's not for everybody what makes the egret most valuable to collectors is the fact that these cabinets come with that swivel mechanism built in every single one as far as i know comes with that mechanism making it very popular if you have one of these cabinets you have that mechanism to twist the monitor as necessary without having to go through the whole process that i just you know just talked about from what I understand, although I've never seen one myself, other cabinet manufacturers had similar systems to this, but it was an optional extra that an arcade operator would have had to order when they ordered the cabinet, which makes it exceedingly rare. But for this particular model, it is it came standard. This year too, I have a emotional attachment to, a sentimental attachment to, for a lot of reasons. Um, it is one of the first things I bought after surviving a near-death experience. Uh, something that I talked about in my introduction to arcade cabinets video, which if you go to the main channel, it's my trailer video. I just leave it there. Um, so this one is very important to me, besides the fact that it's a very popular machine, you know, amongst arcade collectors. Um, when you are getting into the hobby of candy cabinets, people are looking for this cabinet. You often hear, I'd like to buy an Egret too. And then they use the word mint. And uh, yeah. Um, I thought I paid a lot of money for it 10 years ago, as of 22, 2022 right now, the prices are just insane. 
So enough of history about the actual cabinet. Let's talk more about the mini cabinet here. Um, it has 50 games. They're all Taito games. Um, I'm going to make this review real short for you uh, if you want my opinion. Um, the game selection that came with this cabinet versus the Sega Astro Mini, which I've also reviewed. And uh, you can see, I'll put a little link to the video here. Um, I think the game selection on the Taito cabinet is much better. Even though I don't have a strong affinity for the games it comes with, mostly because I don't know most of them, but the, the range of games, the types of games, uh, just how good they play versus, shockingly, the Sega uh, cabinet, I, I think are better in general. Although I still maintain, as I did in that previous video for the Sega Mini, these cabinets needed some Capcom fighters or Capcom arcade games of some sort. They should have licensed them. Where, where the Sega Mini does not have any expansion, as far as I'm aware, uh, thankfully the Egret 2 does. There is an SD card slot on the side here, um, which will allow further games to be um, ported to it. So who knows, maybe that can happen in the future. So what we're going to do now is do the unboxing of all the items that came as a single package unit, um, the extra controllers and all that sort of thing, and then we'll move on to testing and then uh, my conclusion. To be completely frank with you, I was really shocked by how small this box was. In fact, when I received it, I actually thought that I only got the arcade machine, the mini cab, and nothing else. But uh, surprisingly, they fit everything in here. I was truly shocked. I also want to reiterate that this is the Japanese release. I'm not sure what box or packaging comes with the US release um, that is with strictly limited games, I think, and any other retailers it might be going to. This is strictly the Japanese release that came straight from Amazon Japan. I watched Joe from GameSax review of the Egret 2 Mini, and these are the marquee cards that they didn't send to him. This collection also includes a multi-disc soundtrack for the games that are in the collection. This definitely is one of the best packaged products I've ever received in that one box. This all came in that one small box. I unfortunately lost the video of unboxing the cabinet itself, but it was pretty uneventful. And this is my first look at the cabinet as I pulled it out of the box. One surprising thing that didn't strike me until much later is how much larger this cabinet is compared to the Sega Astro Mini cabinet. Um, I would figure that out later. I actually thought it was the same mold or similar. Here I'm trying the rotating mechanism for the device for the first time, which I showed you with the real cabinet, or partially anyway. It's pretty easy to use. It was at this point that I started to realize how much larger this cabinet was compared to the Sega Astro Mini. Putting on the plastic marquee, uh, I could tell right away that it was much larger and is a much thicker plastic. First, we're going to unbox the control pad.
Next, we're unboxing the Rollerball controller, and uh, I was actually kind of shocked to see this SD card. To be honest, I had pre-ordered this device and package months and months ago, and I didn't know that it was going to come with a game cart. I kind of figured that's what it was immediately, um, but I didn't know what was on it, and I assumed it was one game, but uh, it turned out to be several. I can't read Japanese, but the pictures in the manual for the controller pretty much confirm what I suspected, that it was an SD card, that it must have additional content, and it shows exactly where you plug it into the console itself. I didn't figure out until later you have to reboot the console to get it to boot to this SD card. Up next is the arcade stick, and to be honest, the Amazon Japanese pictures really didn't convey the size of this arcade stick. Um, I'm not disappointed with it. Actually, I'm kind of happy that it's smaller, uh, easier to store, but I definitely was not expecting this form factor and this size. I'll be honest, I didn't know what this little switch was for until I watched Joe's video from GameSack on the console itself, because the console can switch as well. Uh, this is to allow a four-way stick or eight-way stick uh, for your arcade stick, and I found both were adequate in the default position, but you may want to switch this if you pick one of these up to give it a shot. Maybe you'll get better controls out of it. Based on this form factor, if it works with a PC, which I haven't tested yet, this would be an excellent travel stick to take with you if you're going to go fly somewhere and want to have something with you to use, potentially, uh, at a friend's house or who knows what, if you have a laptop with you. The four and eight-way stick options are labeled here, so we know what that means now. This collection also comes with a really nice magazine art book sort of thing, which shows a lot of art and I'm assuming explains a lot of history about the games included. Being that I don't speak Japanese, I can really only guess that's what's on these pages. Um, but it's still a nice collection. A lot of nice, pretty pictures. Um, it's just not really useful to me as a English speaker who can't speak any Japanese at all. Including the soundtrack is a nice bonus, though I can't see myself listening to any of this music, mostly because these games are not from my childhood specifically, uh, most of them anyway. Uh, I'm probably just going to keep this for collection purposes. Now I can't confirm this, but I believe that this set comes with a marquee for every game that comes pre-programmed with the Egret 2. Uh, that's what it seems like to me. There are quite a few in here, and I only recognized a few of them myself, and I only wanted to put one in to test and show that it fits in the slot of the marquee, although for my purposes I'll probably leave it clear. Uh, I think it looks better clear, or maybe make some custom artwork with uh, my Third Strike stuff. I also want to say I don't really like the way the marquee is mounted. It's kind of cheap and flimsy, and it will fall off very easily. This concludes the unboxing portion. There was a lot to unbox. Now we're going to move into first impressions, turning on the cabinet for the first time, and getting into gameplay testing. My first impressions after powering it on is that I really like the way the marquee lights up. The screen is nice and bright. However, shortly after, the speakers suck, unfortunately.
so it feels like there's uh, some input lag here. Um, I don't know, to me, I haven't played most of these games before, so I'm not entirely certain, but my actions... If everything feels delayed, so if I... There's like... I don't know. I have no way to calculate it, but... It's just not responsive. I mean, the buttons are working. The joystick is working. But... Every button I push feels... Off. Does not feel good. Let's uh, let's go to a different game. Let's go to a shooter. So this is one I also tried. I'm gonna switch, rotate it to Tate mode, and then the screen switches, which I like. Here's the controls. Yeah, I don't know. Everything with the joystick feels kind of laggy. I also ran into weird sound issues. So if I hold the shoot button here... See, there's no sound from the bullets, but if I let go... No, see, still nothing. You don't hear any of the, any of the explosions. Unless that's part of the game, but I'm not sure. I think that's an emulation issue. Ah, oh, Jesus. I'm not very good at these shooting games, and... The screen being this small, I... would not want to play this... these types of games on such a small screen for too long. Although my eyes are kind of bad, so... Take that as you will. A special. Let's try a different game. Uh, let's try another horizontal or Tate mode one. Let's see, most of them are shooters. This looks. I want to try something fast-paced to see if I really feel, you know, the 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 lag that I think is there. I expect some input delay, but I don't know. It just it just feels. Yeah, it, feel, it feels like there's delay. It might just be me, though. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, this one's hard to see. Kind of for my eyes. If you have bad eyes, I would not recommend trying to play these games on the little thing. Yeah, see. All right, let's try one more here. See if I can feel any more delay. Never played this one before. Let's give it a shot. Oh, Lunar Lander, okay. Feels a little laggy. Oh. The frame rate's really bad. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Oh. Okay. Oh, I see. I. Ah! Ah, 
messed that one up. Okay, let's try that again. So you have to land. Okay, so it landed okay. Now I have to make it back. Oh. Once you start going up, you can't let go to go down. Alright, so I gotta make it down. Oh, frame rate. It's frame rate looks real, real bad frame rate. Unless the game was like that originally, but I've never played it before. At least this version. Yes, I did. I didn't say game over. This is definitely an older game. The smaller pads give you more points. Alright, I don't know. Uh, I I feel like there's like input lag, at least when I'm playing it here. Um, on the minicap itself. Um, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, we're going to move on to using... Um, it on the HDMI cable on the TV and uh, see if we feel the same playing through the TV. Um, maybe it'll be more noticeable there. Uh, otherwise, I mean, it's a nice novelty, but I, I would not play seriously with this little joystick and these buttons. This is not great. But it's interesting that you can flip the screen, you know, like this, just like the, ori you know, the original cab. I'm glad it self-orients. So... Let's move on to uh, using the TV and uh, the controllers I got. All right, so we have HDMI hooked up to my television and capture system here. Um, we're first going to play a little bit using the arcade stick and buttons that are actually on the Egret 2 Mini uh, to show that you would, if you didn't buy the controllers that I showed earlier in the video, you could just use um, the, the control stick that's with it. You could play most, I think all of the games that come with it um, as standard with this control scheme. Um, so we're going to do that. <clears throat> and uh, we'll start with something I haven't played. Let's try this one. And now I can see on the TV, I can actually see the buttons. It tells you what the rapid fire is. So there is a turbo button. Bomber would be the special move. And you can, have, there is save states. We'll try that a little later. Um, there's also um, game settings, which is uh, E, which is button number two, and uh, you can put how many uh, lives you have, what the bonus points are, and what the difficulty is. These are all, uh, each game should have its own set uh, of options. So uh, we're just going to start this game. I've never played it before. And these are arcade, uh, Taito Arcade ROMs, so you have to press um, this purple button right here to add credits. And then the pinkish button, or violet button, is for start, and the white button brings up the main menu. So you can see the buttons, you can save, load, that sort of thing. Uh, we're just going to press start. If you had a second controller in, a player two could play. They press start as well, but we're not going to be doing that right now. This feels better in this position, and the, in the earlier part I was recording it wasn't as easy, so we'll see if I feel better about the controls now, because I definitely felt input delay before. The emulation so far is not too bad, although... That Lunar game was kind of laggy. I'm not sh I mean, having, ne having never played the original, I'm not sure if uh, that's how it actually was. Um, I will admit that most of the Taito games that are um, on this collection, I've never seen or played before. Um, talking and trying not to get shot is... Uh, well, at least it didn't start, it starts you here. That's interesting. Oh, look at that! It does feel a little better on a, a, a better solid surface, but I still think I feel input delay. Uh, I mean, again, I, I mentioned this before. 
I expected some sort of input delay, but it seems a little excessive, or maybe it's just the one game. I, I'm not sure. Maybe someone like Digital Foundry will do uh, analysis, uh, or someone else who has the equipment to really, you know... Oh, hey, I didn't know you could shoot up here. That's bullshit. Um, you know, someone else who's more qualified for uh, being able to determine that might be able to say, but to my... Yeah, to my, to my feeling, this does feel um, a little delayed. <sighs> wow. Oh yeah, I have I put a lot of coins in. I was like, how am I still left? Usually, oh, because I also expanded the lives. So, setting arcade dip switches. Those, most of these settings, I believe, you probably would be able to change if you actually had the PCB. If you were in an actual arcade, if you went to the test mode, you probably could set the same options that I was able to set there. It's most likely, probably nothing special, just options that the uh, arcade ROM allows. Wow, I didn't even see that. Yeah. I'm not good at this. <laughs> Let's try a different game. And you'll notice there are a lot of shooters in this collection, especially since the screen can go into top tape mode. You'll also notice that um, the, since we're you're in 16 by 9 screen, all it does is just bring down the screen down towards the middle. Um, I don't think you can make it go to 4x3. Let's see. Huh. No, there's a wide mode to stretch it, which you should not ever do. These games were designed for 4x3. Oh, here we go. HDMI turn. Ah, there you go. That's how you would do it in here. Interesting. So if you had like a dedicated LCD and wanted to play these games, you would you would change that HDMI turn there. But uh, if you're using HDMI wide, do not do that when you're, you know, in the horizontal scaling. Uh, there's some filter options, which I typically do not like those sorts of things. Um, there are different BGMs, not a big deal because you're not going to be the menu that much. Uh, these demo settings is um, how, if, if you leave the machine idle, it'll start showing um, gameplay and stuff uh, of the arcade games. And it, I have actually watched it a bit, it goes through different games um, over time. Uh, most games will have it, most arcade games have a demo setting where, you know, they show, like, in fighting games, they'll have two characters fight each other and then go back to the title screen and that sort of thing. That's what was, what's known as a demo. Um, so this, you could set the different times if you wanted to. Um, this primarily would be if you were using this as just a display, for example. Um, if you just had it plugged in and had it going through the demo, you would probably set those sorts of things here. Or if you wanted, like, an interactive wallpaper kind of thing. Um, the volume, I had the volume at the highest in the uh, parts after. The speakers are not good. Um, they're kind of tinny. Um, I didn't really expect that much from it, to be completely honest. But uh, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's do another game. Let's do another. I don't know. Oh, that looks interesting. RPG. Uh. Let's give it a shot. Let's see. Fighter, mage, priest, or ninja, embark on the quest to rescue the princess. I'm not going to go through all the games, by the way. I just want to go through uh, a couple. Okay, attack, jump, pretty simple. I also like that in this mode, there's um, these wallpapers. And from what I've seen so far, um, all the games have individual wallpapers. Some are better than others. But uh, they... Um, are unique. It's not like there's one wallpaper for all games or something like that. Okay, let's see. Alright. I don't know what that means. This is probably not released in America. I want to do Mage. Oh, you actually put a name. Oh, it's in Japanese. I mean, everything else is in English, but the games... I mean, this game was clearly a Japanese ROM. So... I don't know. Mileage may vary with anything that's text heavy, but most of these games are arcade games that so don't have text. This is kind of an outlier, so. You know. Hey. Fuck you, buddy. 
how do I how do I fire magic? Oh, it's Mario 3! Okay, I don't want to talk to you. You press I I, I guess that? You press up. Well, that's not like how a lot of games are. Oh, there we go. How did I do that? Oh, okay, I held it. Interesting. Oh. This kind of reminds me of Foxana Do. I think that's how you say it on the NES. Or maybe more popular, like Zelda 2 on the NES. I gotta get- I gotta kill something. Come on. Oh! Oh, pig guy! Come on, Gandalf. You gotta have me worn one spell. Oh, we have a time limit. Probably helps if we knew what we were doing. I mean, it looks decent, and this one definitely runs well. I don't see any... there's no, like, weird frame issues, frame pacing. Um, in fact, uh, I would say the, this feels more responsive so far than the shooters. Oh, what was that? Wait a minute, I thought I saw something. Oh! Whoa! Okay, that's pretty cool. I don't know, I must have picked that up. So what you do is you hold the button down, and it cycles, and then you let go. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, no! Oh, at least, can he swim? Oh, no. Oh, he's getting hurt by water. He hasn't had a bath. The old man's nemesis! How the fuck do you get out? Uh, okay, I don't know how I did that. I'm dead, basically, though. Oh. I, I don't know how I'm not dead. Honestly. The screen's yelling at me, I saw a bunch of, bunch of exclamation points. Oh, all right, I'm finally dead. Interesting. Interesting game. So, like I said, as you can see here, I can, um... Actually, you know what we should test? Let's save. Save slot. Let's go back to the main menu. Uh, right? And I'm gonna, uh, as you can see there, the, uh, the save state's right there. So, hit it. How fast is it? Instant, pra in practically instant. What the fuck? Interesting. Okay, so we get three save states. Oh. If I knew, that, if I could read the text, I think I'd be more interested in this particular game. Kind of. Oh, was that instant death? Whack. Oh, it's like Donkey Kong now. Uh, Donkey Kong Jr. specifically. I mean. Ooh, if you have arachnophobia, I'm sorry, I had no idea. Yeah. Oh. I can't see myself playing this game a lot, um, not being able to read the text. Anyway, all right, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to go back to the top menu. We are going to plug in the uh, controller, the six button controller, which uh, feels like the back reminds me almost exactly of a um, Sega Saturn pad. And the front obviously is definitely designed after that with the button layout, but it's thicker than the Sega Saturn pad. Um, the beat D-pad feels kind of mushy, but I it's better than actually it feels better than a lot of newer ones too. 
Um, we'll see right now. The buttons are convex instead of concave. So they're kind of like the Super Nintendo buttons, the top two row, if you're, if you're born in the States and had that instead of Super Famicom. It's kind of what they feel like. Uh, they feel okay. Uh, so we're going to plug this in right now and play something with this particular controller. All you have to do is take your standard USB port, plug it in the back. There's two USB ports, so you could plug two controllers in at once if you wanted to. So it's plugged in now. And recognized immediately. All right, I'm going to try to keep the controller in shot. So let's, uh... Oh, ooh, this looks interesting. Let's try that. I don't like that... So there's there's name... There's button names at the top, but they're not on the controller itself. They could have put little... little letters here to indicate what's what. I assume this first button at the bottom was A to go into it, but... <sighs> You know, if you didn't know that, that could be kind of annoying. But uh, let's see what settings there are. The difficulty, the sound. Okay, no, we're not going to do any of that. Uh, all right, well, let's press A and start a new game. And as you can see, you have the three um, buttons, same as the uh, arcade stick there. And, um, you know, for your your coins. <laughs> Wow, that can hey, get annoying. Come on. Hey, come on. Hey, come on. <laughs> Press start hey, once. On. Oh, he's going to keep saying it. Holy oh, shit. All right. Um, I wonder if I can press start here. Oh, there's player two. Oh, hey. I ain't got a chance. What's Indiana Jones doing? Drop dead, you scum. Wow. Voices in English. Holy shit! Oh, okay. All right. Oh, all right. Okay, I can get behind this. Uh, you know, we're gonna have to start again because I obviously don't have player two here. So uh, I'm gonna <laughs> reset. I've never played this before, but I'm uh, impressed already. I'm not, I'm not gonna press that too many times. So, I'm going to stick with Indiana Jones. It's clearly who that is. And, uh, we're hunting elephants, and Indiana Jones isn't happy about it. I Drop dead, you scum! I feel like a South Park character. I like it. I like it. Get away. Hey, eat that! Oh. That's... Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the one. It's not PC. Kinda don't like where the jump button is, but it's not a big deal. Oh, I only got one rocket launcher. Oh, no! Why would I want a barrel instead of a rocket launcher? This is actually kinda cool, actually. I, I like this. I have a question if they... That headache comes with copyright. Hey, leave the lion alone! Yeah! Kill him! Okay, I like this game. I like this game a lot. <laughs> oh, I get swords too? Yeah! Oh, and it's not like fucking... It's not like Streets of Rage when you get the goddamn um, pipe and you do one hit. It's like... Oh, man. You eat that! Well, you know what? I'm gonna have to see if I can find the, the goddamn... Arcade PCB for this. I like this a lot. Sorry, lady. Oh, there's a pistol. I wish I could pick up more than one weapon. Visually, it's not the greatest, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's no. It is like normal beat up. You get hit once and your weapon goes away. Is there a special? Oh, what the? Holy crap! Indiana Jones with his fucking light, goddamn lightning 
is like Street Fighter 4 a light punch. Oh, <laughs> Dead. Hate furniture. The, the, the angle kind of reminds me of um, Paperboy 2 uh, on the Super Nintendo. The way the kind of the angle parts. I mean, the rest of the graphics is not bad. The sprites, the sprites are terrible. I could find out what year this was made. Probably would tell me a lot about why certain details. Oh, there's the whip! I said it was Indiana Jones! I knew it! Give me the whip! Ah, no, I don't want to get whipped. I want to... <laughs> Alright, there we go. There we go! There we go! That, that's it! There it is! Copyright infringement right there! <laughs> it's a little slow. But it, it, it hits behind also, so that's actually that might actually be invaluable. I could just stand here and fucking whip back and look at that. <laughs> I like that a lot. I mean, ugh, die. Ugh. What do you jerks think you're doing? Get lost. Wait, I was getting humped by the bird. Come on, Articuno. Is it trying to help me or is it trying to attack me? Oh, I think it's attacking. Alright. The whip might be the best weapon so far. Even though it's slower, it, it seems to hit all of them and behind me. You know, when it goes back, you see him hit behind. So that's a hitbox. Box, hit hitbox. Hitbox. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. Uh. Yeah, we'll do it in the end of the game. Asshole. Took my whip. Every beat beat em up has to have a good jump jump kick. Which that's not bad. Hey, oh shit! Fucking beefy shredder right here with his fucking dynamite. Can I pick up the rock? Oh fuck yeah I can! Sorry, I, I'm usually not this animated, but this is... <laughs> oh, oh, what if I can pick up the truck? Wait, get away from me! Let me pick up the truck! Oh, son of a bitch. Hey, come on. Oh, okay. See, I'm trying to pick up the truck. It's just messing me uh, I don't think I can. Look at that! Do, 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 do. Ooh, 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 ooh! Oh, what the fuck? How are you not dead? Later. Oh, I can't grab the rock. It sucks. Oh, see, the first one that didn't hurt me, now it did. Damn, I can't. Oh, holy crap. That dude got totally wrecked. Okay, I'm, I'm saving this. I like this a lot. Holy crap. I can come back to that. Let's see. I don't even know the name of the game. All I did was... Start um, playing it. Ru Run Arc. I have never played it. 1990. Okay, that kind of explains the sprites. I think the quality of some of the sprites. That. That right there. Th that is. Yeah. Okay. We'll do one more with the controller. Let's see. Uh, is there like a racing type game? I noticed some of these previews take a little while to load. That's kind of interesting. Uh, fighting game. I want to stay with that for the arcade stick. Elevator action. I know that game. That's a really popular one. Puzzle bobber. I want to use bobble. I'm going to use arcade stick. That's this one. Ooh, that looks interesting. I'm going to put that one. Space Invaders. Uh, I'm kind of shocked there's no racing games. A lot of shooters, elevator action, two types. I'll tell you right after bat, so far the game selection has been is better than the Sega Astro Mini. 
Um, hope you may, if you're a subscriber to the channel, you probably saw my review of that one. Um, even though I haven't played most of these, and in a lot of cases I've never heard of most of these, um, from a gameplay perspective, what I've played so far, I like better. Um, I played this one for, let's play this one again. Uh, I played this one when I was first trying the joystick to see if there was, like, um, delay. In fact, I should probably speak on that. I haven't felt really any delay with this right here, so let's see how it feels with the, with the controller. It might be in my head. I'm I'm not sure, but um, this game kind of sucks, I'll be honest, from what I played. Right. I, I, I mean, the sprites are nice and big, but... The gameplay was kind of whatever. Oh, he did it. Like, I, I don't know. Oh, see, I see a pal meter, but how do you how do you increase that? So I'm trying to do like Street Fighter motions, and it's not really double tap. Isn't really doing anything. This feels like almost like a rock paper scissors type thing. Like that. It's not. Um, oh, why is kick all the way over here on the last button? Ooh. Certainly easier to play this game with uh, this pad instead of the joystick. I will tell you. But um, not sure why the kick is there. Oh, if I jump and keep pressing. I keep pressing, it's almost like a Tatsu, but it's not. I don't think it hits. Oh, hey, no! Go away! I don't know how you do it. Like, there's, I'd have to look up a guide for like special moves, but... Call me not impressed with this one. <laughs> it's funny the way he does that. Hey. Uh, let's do one more round. But I, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't play this one again. Oh, hey. Were you mad that I was kicking you so much before, and now you're doing that, or being asshole arcade? Not like it, do ya? I don't know how that, where that POW meter comes in. Like, how do you make it a stronger POW? I'm pressing multiple buttons, I'm trying double tap, quarter circle, half circle. It's not like he's Guile, I can't fucking charge kick him. How the hell did you do that? Uh, Called bullshit. Yeah, I don't. I don't like this one. I, I definitely don't. All right, so uh, we're going to now unplug this controller, and uh, I'm going to um, plug in the arcade stick and see uh, see how that plays. So I'll be completely honest. When I uh, pre-ordered this entire set, this is the entire uh, Eager Two set that's currently available in Japan. Um, I thought this stick was going to be almost the size of the, um, the the controller. I did not expect it to be this like mini arcade stick, and it does appear to have micro switches. Um, it feels kind of like a JLF, but shorter. It has a shorter throw on the stick, and the buttons are definitely like full size um, full size uh, Sanma type buttons. Uh, let's try the arc, the nin the ninja kids. Attack, jump, ninja power. Easy enough. A lot of these games just have two buttons. Some have three. Pretty simple. I mean, most early arcade games were very simple in that way. This is definitely another beat 'em up. Hey, 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 thank you. Uh, I'll just be the first guy with the sword. <laughs> this, the 
Sensei is as big as the building. Very Ninja Turtles esque there. That's interesting. That's in English. And then they have subtitles in Japanese. It's like an episode. Okay. Oh, the ball on this stick feels kind of large, actually. Which is not bad. It just feels kind of comically large, in a way. In fact, it reminds me of old um, Simpsons cabinets. Sort of. Oh, I don't know how I did that. Whoa! Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Whoa, oh, whoa, weird. Ninja power! See, I purposely hit it that time. Oh, he's round! Yeah, this reminds me, like, this is like a weird cross between um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and The Simpsons the game. It's actually more of a Simpsons game more than anything else. Oh, it's a, it's a power-up I picked up and then I had to control it around. It's not, it's not terrible. If you like The Simpsons, uh, I think you'd really like this because it's, it's, it's a lot like that. Yeah, this this uh, collection definitely showing a lot of games that I've never heard of or thought about before. Um, you know, my my egret too, as I've, I've probably mentioned a few times, definitely over the years on the channel. It's my dedicated uh, Street Fighter Two or Street Fighter Three Third Strike machine. Um, I used to have Street Fighter 2 in it, but uh, I never changed, changed the, um... Oh, cool. Different ninja skill. Uh, I never changed it, and that's on purpose. Oh, bars. Oh, oh, that, oh I'm a fast man? Oh, it kind of, it looks like I'm invincible. Yeah, these are humans. This is definitely kind of violent. I'm cutting them around, cutting them in half here. Ooh. Be, if you double tap, you get a friggin' Akuma slide here. I don't have any power. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, that does hurt. So yeah, if you, if you get you get the Puma dash, it hurts. But it is a little, little weird. I mean, like I said, it's, it's basically the Simpsons. You're, you're playing the Simpsons here, control wise. I wonder if this one's like came out after the Simpsons because. It big time feels like that. Oh, kill him! He's a good turn again! Dude, stop juicing. <laughs> the common rider bike. Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. Definitely changing it up. This is uh this is definitely different. And the power does the same thing. Okay. I'm gonna save there and let's try a different game. So far this feels pretty good. Um let's definitely uh let's do Rayforce Force because this is one I do know. I've played different versions of this before. Rapid lock-on laser. Um, let's see how this feels. Why do I have to wait a moment? I don't want to wait. Okay. Whatever. 
Hold down the rapid fire, holding down the charge. This feels pretty good. Very Panzer Dragoon ish 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 kind of. Not exactly what I'm saying. I, I know, I think, I think this was ported to the Saturn and it's kind of fairly expensive these days. Oh, I see, okay, I only put the rapid shot when it's aimed on the weapon. I thought I had to do it. So it'll, it'll target things that can be rapid fired. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, and some things can only be shot with the rapid fire. Okay. It's a yeah, this feels pretty good. I, I wish there was more of a lip on the bottom to rest my um oh, but the, if the arcade sticks maybe the, that I can rest my rest uh, my wrists on. Cause right now, um it's um Sitting on the table, like if I wasn't, if this wasn't a good surface, I, I could see this being kind of problematic. Took it literally. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, let's uh, switch to a different game here. I want to do one of the fighting games. Um, I think this is one. Yeah, I've definitely never played this before. Light, so it uses all six buttons. It looks a lot like an SNK, early SNK Final Fight type game. Interesting. Do that one, I guess. Let's play the guy who probably can. Like, I don't know. Just guessing. Some interesting sprite scaling. Round one. Fight! Light, medium, heavy, light, medium, heavy. Kind of weird, but round two. Fight. Oh, I like that. I got him to do like burning knuckle, but 
Oh, he's a charge character. Not a fan. Not a fan. Oh, there we go. All I did was help the button longer. Other than... Oh, ow. Other than him being a charge character, I, I like the video, I like it. I like how I was it, you know, broke through the, the ring. This definitely would not have been on any of the 16-bit consoles, no way. What the hell? How did I do that? So I basically did flash kick with punch. And I have a fireball. Double fireball. See, I'm trying another character. I, I, this isn't too bad. I can see myself playing, trying this more. Let's do. I guess let's do the first character, who is probably this game for you. Round one. You know what? I'm gonna. I wanna. Don't wanna be messing with this. Come on. I wanna be able to, like, press buttons. Let's pick someone else. Someone randomly. The player two. Round one. Fight! Yep. Fireball. I have a Tatsu. I have a Fire Dragon Punch. Oh yeah, it is. But it's a kick. Nice. Yeah, he's definitely the Ryu Architect. Archetype. Archetype. For sure. Okay. Yeah, I could play I could play this for you clone. I like how the doctor's there. He's like, oh he's dead. How dare you? Alright. Round Let's one. try this again. I don't get Oh! Okay, this is fireball. Oh, I like that. I like that overhead. That's like Ken CBS2. Sort of. Oh, you like that, don't you, bitch? Got some moves now. Ooh. Much better once I <laughs> know some of the moves. <laughs> I like this. I like this a lot. Oh. So far, I can allow the games. Not all of them have been away. I, not like the Sega um, mini app, so I felt that console was great. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, that's half circle back punch. That's, oh, I said Akuma, and he's basically doing Akuma's version with kick, but it's the punch. Alright, I need to stop doing that. Well, throws at least aren't like Street Fighter 2 used to death. Oh. Boxing is America. Really? Well, it's UFC these days. Update your game! No, I'm kidding. Alright, let's. Let's. 
I'm trying to dragon punch it, damn it. Kind of want to dragon punch, but I have to remember it's got a, it's a kick button. So it's, and then this is weird the way I'm here pressing buttons. It does feel like there's a little bit of input delay on this one, though. I mean, the game is a little slower than a lot of them I'm used to. Oh, I like that. I think that, that was just like a neutral standing fierce. I like that. That's not bad. I can see myself playing that some more, for sure. Um, I want to probably try my other fight stick and see if I could use it. Something with a bigger surface area. Uh, let's see if I get my ass kicked more with this first, this next one, because the computer is a uh, hitting Round one. Spike. Fay Long. Yeah, see, he's doing the Fei Long thing. He uses his hands instead of his feet. Oh, he's got nunchucks. Yeah, this is definitely uh, inspired by Street Fighter ST for sure. Or at least, that's my interpretation. like a pixel. <laughs> I like it. I like this game a lot. Uh, we might as well uh, save that. Uh, let's try that other fighting game real quick. You all know Space Invaders. We played that Lunar Rescue. I didn't like it. Some of these older ones, these 8-bit type ones, uh, I just have no interest. Kind of seems to me, are they in? Are they? Oh yeah, they are. Okay, so they're in order by release date. So 1985, the year that I came to in existence, and then you see that the the dates. Uh, it gets closer to our time now. This one doesn't have a date, does it? The in-game copyright remain as a version. That's interesting. 1988. Okay, let's see if we can find that other fighting game. Not that one. There was, I think there was one more that I saw. I think it was this one. Yeah, Kaido Nako. Okay. Let's give this one a shot. I wonder if it's related to the other game. Actually, kind of, it looks like it. Wait, did I pick the same game? Round one. Fight. No. This is a definitely different game. Oh, look at that health with that fucking grab! Holy shit! This 
So is this like their Street Fighter 2 and the other one's their Super Street Fighter 2? Yeah, I want to make sure, because... Again, I never forget. So Kaiser Knuckle, 1994. Dan Kuga, 1994. Oh, both. This game, the game that were never released. That's some uh, good English translation there. So maybe... Okay, so this one was released in 1994. So my guess is this is a sequel that was in development that was never released until now, potentially. I'd have to look it up. Again, don't know most of these games. So let's um, let's do something a little more familiar. Bubble Bobble. I'm surprised there's not more of these. There used to be a Bubble Bobble machine um, at my local bowling alley. That's where I played it first. I haven't played it in years, so... Puzzle Bobble, if you've ever played it, it is it is what it is. Played with an arcade stick. Uh, probably a little easier. Although I don't remember all these like interludes before. Huh. Alright. So, the next thing we're going to do is actually play the expansion pack, which is what this little SD card is, from what I understand. This has a game that's only available to use with the other controller, so I'm going to plug that in and uh, let's see if we can figure this out. So there is an SD card slot on the side of the Egret 2 here, and I've taken the S this expansion out. I'm going to make sure we're in shot here, and I'm going to plug it in. Oh, it's got like a spring mechanism. And uh, we'll figure out... Oh, there goes the... Uh, Oh, that's how you sort it. I'm gonna do that. Uh, so, what uh, I thought was only one game turns out to be a whole bunch of games. Um, what I figured out on my own, I, th I thought I was gonna have to look it up online since it's all in Japanese, um, is once you put the SD card in, you have to turn the system off. And when you turn it back on, it boots into the new selection of games which are on the SD uh, card specifically. And these are all uh, different games that are very specific to this control. Well, they require this controller. So we're going to try two. Uh, I know I've played versions of Arkanoid before, so let's uh, figure out. Oh, yeah, see, it has the, has, shows you the different uh, the new systems here. So you have to use the paddle. All right, let's give it a shot. This would have required a special arcade control mechanism, you know, for the original. This has a nice little weight to it. Man, that's fast. Maybe I should, I'll use my right hand. I have a little... I was trying to do my left hand. Oh. <laughs> Let's try that again. I am not good at this. Let's 
try it again. My right, I'm definitely better with my right hand, but. Oh, hey, that should have counted. Yeah, I'm not, not exactly a fan. Uh, see, you're supposed to do that so you get all the points. Man, that's kind of fast. Oh! Damn. Man, it must have been a long time since I played Arkham because I don't remember any... I remember, like, parts of this, but I don't remember being this damn fast. Hey, other versions of the game. Oh. Oh, what? Uh, other version of the game. Damn it. Um, would bounce from the uh, the orange piece. So. Okay. <laughs> Had enough of this one. Uh. Oh yeah, I can use a rollerball. Okay, let's do one with the rollerball, because these all seem to use the rotary. So I don't want to do the paddle. There's a lot of Arkanoid tech games on here. Oh, here we go. Never played this one before, so let's give it a shot. This one definitely uses the the roller ball. I've played some games with something like this, but never the you know. Jesus, I must have been a kid, so I'm not sure what to expect. Uh, let's default. Nah, let's skip the Star Wars story. Oh, okay, interesting. Ah! Oh, I have fire, okay. Okay, that is kind of not easy to control. I mean... Ugh. Oh, I have limited fire. Oh, I recharged it. That's interesting, huh? I don't hate it, but I also am not a huge fan of it. Why don't I at least pass the first level? I have health. I don't think I can kill them if they have that blue energy shield around them. Alright, at least it didn't start me at the, at the end there. Alright, I don't know why I was able to destroy those, but whatever. Ah, I'll go faster. Uh oh. see myself playing this collection very much to be frank. I don't really care for this. I mean I bought the whole set so I had the whole set but uh oh, I at least, um, is it gonna start from the beginning or okay at least it's at the boss. Oh and he's got he's, I think he, it's not full health because his color. At least the game gives me that. You gotta watch out for the. Oh no! Here we go. You beat him at least. All right, can you die now, please.
Jesus, that took forever. Uh, I think that's all I'm gonna show with uh, this particular controller. But as you can see with the expansion pack, and thankfully I can use this to make it a little easier. Um, it does add games. So from what I understand, there are gonna be other expansion packs that they're gonna sell that are programmed to have more games. I actually kind of want to see what the strike bowling is. Because this, uh, I'll try this one at least. This ball feels really stiff. Whack. It looked perfectly fine. Okay. No, I, st I still wouldn't play this. This 8-bit stuff is kind of... Mm. Oh, well. Alright. I think we're going to get into uh, the next part of this video, which is going to lead into our conclusions. I finally pulled the Sega Astro Mini off of the shelf, plugged it in so I could see what it looked like next to the Egret 2 Mini. And it's clear that the Egret 2 Mini is much larger, at least screen-wise. However, I have the complete set for the Sega Astro Mini, which has the bottom stand and the arcade stool as well. So uh, they're large in their own ways. Uh, the Sega Astro Mini is taller and the uh, Egret 2 is wider overall. Um, and if you're going to play on either of these, the screen on the Egret 2 is much easier because it's much larger, as you can see here. But the buttons and stick feel relatively similar, actually, uh, having them next to each other. And to be frank, I'm really disappointed that the Egret 2 doesn't have an option for the bottom bank like the Sega Astro Mini does. It doesn't have the bottom part of the cabinet, which would make it more authentic. Before I get to my conclusions, there's something I kind of want to address that I didn't really talk about also. Um, and it deals with gatekeeping. Um, the arcade community, well this, I should say that almost every community seems to have their own version of gatekeepers. But when the uh, Egret 2 was posted, when they announced it, I saw a lot more gatekeeping activity um, on this particular cabinet more than I saw for the Astro Mini, for example. And, you know, let people enjoy things, I guess is what I want to say. Um, if you don't like it, that's fine. But the vitriol against them miniaturizing caddy cabinets, just I don't understand it. I mean, it's a niche hobby to begin with, especially in the Western world. And, um... I love the fact that they're making miniature versions of my favorite arcade machines. You know, I own the real thing, and I, I bought these. You know, I paid the money for them. And, and I probably won't buy another one again, unless they make an initial D um, cabinet, maybe then. But beyond that, you know, I can't see myself doing it again. They've already made my favorite cabinet. They've already made the most important cabinet to me. Um, one other thing I should also mention... Um, in recent years, the Egret 2 has kind of had a weird stigma with certain people. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of people who would say it's an overrated cabinet, and to them, I can really only shrug. You know, um, it is one of the most sought-after cabinets in the pantheon of uh, candy cabinets, for reasons I explained in the beginning of the video. Um, it is, uh, the person I bought this cabinet off of, his words to me were, it, um, it was the Lexus of candy cabinets. Just saying it's the most premium cabinet. And, um, you know, in some ways that's true, in some ways it's not. Um, to me it's important for a lot of reasons that I've discussed and I wouldn't mind sharing again maybe in a more in-depth video if anyone was interested. There, there are a lot of more deeper reasons, personal reasons. This cabinet's important to me. I want to be cremated and stuck into the cabinets inside whenever I go. That's that's how important this thing is to me. If it happens, I don't know. We'll see. But this this weird stigma that it's an overrated cabinet, I just it's all hearsay. You know, it is one of those things where finding parts for it is difficult. 
um, and it is an exceedingly rare cabinet, an exceedingly expensive cabinet today. But that doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, it's always worked for me, and even if it were to fail, even if the monitor were to die and I couldn't fix it for whatever reason, I'll be keeping it. I just, it just means, it means too much to me. I just wanted to get that out there because there was just a lot of gatekeeping there. You know, I'm not saying I've never been an elitist in in the community as well. You know, I I particularly don't like the arcade one-up cabinets. Um, I think they're kind of shoddily built and the emulation's bad, you know, almost across the board. But, you know, if people like them, I'm not going to tell people not to buy them. You know, that's that's on them, you know. You know, if you don't want to buy one of these, don't buy it. Simple as that. You know, or if you like it and you love it, great, you know. It keeps, you know, the industry going. It keeps these arcade manufacturers wanting to revisit their arcade classics. So, I, I have nothing against any of that, you know. But some of the some of the some of the comments some of the aggressive comments were just you know the, for one example a lot of the enthusiasts are on facebook you know they have their facebook groups and a whole section of them split off and create their own group where you can't post many cabinets or you know something like that and it was just it was ridiculous you know so it's just a, a footnote on this entire thing you know i think it would be good to mention for and historical purposes. So if you made it this far in the video or you click the chapter to the conclusion, you must want to hear what I have to say about it. Um, generally speaking, we'll kind of recap a couple things. Number one, um, I do believe there is some input lag. It, it seems perceptible to me depending on the game, depending on the controller. As I kind of showed when using the control stick on the actual arcade machine, at least to me, I felt something and a few of the games, the frame rate was kind of wonky. I'm not sure if that's the way the original game was or not. I, I really can't say, unfortunately. Uh, for the games that I really did enjoy, which if you watch the entire section where I was playing through games, you'll know which ones those are. Loved it. I, I really enjoyed my time with this much more than the Sega Astro Mini. And the game selection, as far as what is available to you, is overall better. Um, if Sega had included more maybe more modern Sega titles, Sega arcade titles, definitely the Naomi era for me especially, um, I would have probably enjoyed that even more, you know. And I, again, I keep saying it, but I really think these arcade cabinets need to branch out to other, um, other arcade manufacturers and bring those games in. You know, bring in Midway, bring in Capcom, you know, um, any number, uh, you know, Konami, any other ones, you know, bring them to, for these cabinets and then just make them represented correctly for the right cabinet. And obviously with the Egret, that can be done with SD cards. I would pay for those extra ones if, um, those extra SD cards if they came with the right games. The current one, the one with all the trackball stuff, I kind of wish I could return that to be honest. Uh, I don't think it works very well. None of the kind of games I really want or like, but I'm a collector, so I'm going to keep it. The other issue is here that this device, with everything included, um, comes out to cost more than a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X right now. And really, this is only for collectors or someone who owns and loves the cabinets or maybe grew up in Japan and uh, thinks fondly of these types of games or, you know, this cabinet or cabinets like it. This is a very niche product, so if you're going to purchase one of these, um, it, you really have to love it. If, if it's one of those things where it's, you just have FOMO, I would tell you not to do it. I don't think it's worth it. Um, but if you are one of those types of people, like me, who either owns a cabinet or loves arcades, whatever, then maybe it's worth it to you. That, that value uh, proposition is really up to you. Um, I mean, it is a well-made cabinet as far as the plastics are concerned. Everything feels good. It has micro switches for the uh, sticks, you know, all that stuff. Other than the, the, I know I didn't really talk about it too much, but the the controller with the roller, that just, something about that feels really cheap. Everything else feels pretty good considering. Really, my conclusion comes down to if you are a collector or you enjoy arcade machines, if you have an affinity for candy cabinets, if you have an affinity for this particular cabinet, if you own one of these cabinets, which, you know, I know you're out there, I've seen pictures, you know, across the world, um, then it might be worth it to you. And the game selection is better, and the fact that it has expandable um, game selection, maybe with future controllers, I'm sure there'll be a Mahjong variant at some point. 
uh, then I can see it being worth it to you. However, if you're if you don't fall under any of those categories, um, this device is probably too expensive for you. Probably not worth the FOMO. You know, it, it sure it's a nice desk piece. You know, I, I will not deny that. But it other than that, it's probably not worth your time. This would be my overall conclusion. It is again, as I said in the beginning, a very niche product, but a well-made niche product. And um, I found some new uh, arcade favorites where I actually have to find the real arcade boards now to stick in the real thing at some point. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with this super long video. Or even if you just went to the conclusion, thank you for watching. I still appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. All the usual YouTube like, subscribe, crap. You know, this is a ho this is my hobby, not my job. So, you know, this is as uh, professional as I can make it, as it were. Anyway, um, I'll answer anything below you put, and um, there'll be more content coming soon. So, uh, yeah, please subscribe, and uh, let me know what you think. Thank you.